In the second part, we applied the previous uh, Minkowski formula in the Bohr to study um, the rigidity for CMC hypersurfaces in the Bohr. Okay, so as we um, as we all know, the CMC hypersurfaces uh, with free boundary uh, in in a Bohr is uh, uh, arising from a constraint geometric variation of problem. So um, if we have a hypersurface which is given by an isometric uh, immersion x, then we define an admissible variation x um, xt, so so that uh, it is uh, still an isometric immersion into the ball, and um, uh, it um, it send, um, maps the interior of M into interior of a ball, and uh, it maps the boundary of M into the boundary of ball, that is sphere. So for every uh, variation, for every um, t, and the admissible variation of vector field uh, y, uh, which is um, the derivative of x with respect to t, that will be uh, that will lie on uh, the tangent space of the sphere. So <laughs> there are uh, uh, several um, geometric quantity we want to see. So the area function is area function of uh, the hypersurface sigma. Okay. And oriented volume uh, is defined as follows. So you can in the embedded case it is you can view it as uh, the volume of omega here. Okay. And the wetting area uh, is defined here and um, in also in embedded case it is just uh, uh, the, the the area of T on this picture, and the energy function E um, is given by the area of sigma minus cosine theta uh, W T. Okay, that is the area of sigma minus cosine theta of area of T. Okay, so here uh, theta is the uh, capillary uh, contact angle. Okay, so um, we have the first variation formula of these quantities for an admissible variation of field y. So the volume, the um, the variation formula for volume is given by the uh, integral of the uh, the inner product of y dot nu, and the um, variation formula for the area is given by the interior, uh, interior integration of h times um, y dot nu, plus the boundary integration of y dot nu, uh, y dot uh, mu. Okay. So in fact, the uh, vari variational formula of area is just the, the uh, integral of divergence, uh, the 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 hypersurface divergence of y. So when you uh, uh, split into the uh, tangential part and the uh, also corner part, then the tangential part will give you by using Stokes for uh, Stokes theorem, you have the boundary term here, and uh, the also normal part will give you a mean curvature here. Okay, and here um, mu is just the co-normal of the hypersurface, the, the boundary of hypersurface. Okay. And a uh, variational formula for the energy um, is given by this formula. So the interior uh, integration is again the mean curvature term. And the boundary term, so now you have um, the inner product of y and mu minus cosine theta nu bar. Okay, here we call that nu bar is the um, nu bar is the uh, co-normal of the boundary of sigma. You view it as the boundary of t, and mu bar is the co-normal of boundary of t uh, um, as the boundary of t. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> uh, the critical point of uh, et with volume constraint, that is 
you um, you make a geometric constraint that the volume uh, volume function is fixed, then here uh, the critical point of ET with volume constraint will be so-called capillary CMC surface. So uh, you can view it um, from the uh, above uh, first variation of formula, because um, the the first variation of V will vanish and the uh, the first variation of E is vanished. Um, and then by the Lagrangian multiplier, you get that the mean curvature must be constant and the boundary uh, term vanishes. Then you, you, you have the condition that uh, mu minus cosine theta nu bar will be always also gone to the uh, to this y for any y on the tangent bundle of uh, the, the 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 sphere. Okay, so then you get the second condition, that is capillary condition. The boundary of sigma intersects the sphere at a constant angle theta. In the special case, theta is pi over two. Then the critical point uh, of E is just the critical point of the area with volume constraint is the famous uh, uh, free boundary CMC surface. Okay. Right. Um, so the rigidity result for CMC hypersurface in a ball. So there are so many previous results like Hopf type theorem. So uh, the Hopf type theorem says that uh, uh, close the CMC uh, two sphere in R three. Uh, must be a ground sphere, so in closed case. So here, uh, in in um, boundary case, uh, Nietzsche first uh, investigated uh, this free boundary CMC two disk in three balls. So such uh, kind of um, uh, two disk uh, can be classified to be totally geodesic or spheric caps, spheric caps. And uh, Rosso arm, uh, they, uh, they give uh, uh, this um, generalization of uh, Nietzsche's result that capillary CMC2 disk is uh, umbilical. And Fraser Schoen uh, studied uh, the higher co-dimension case. And they give that uh, free boundary minimal 2 disk in a ball is totally geodesic. OK. Right. And there are also Alexander of type theorem by assuming uh, embedded embeddedness. So Rosso um, uh, proved that the embedded capillary CMC hypersurface in a ball, and with an addition uh, condition that the boundary of uh, sigma lie, lies on the uh, hemisphere. So such kind of uh, hypersurface can be classified to be umbilical. Uh, note that this additional uh, condition, uh, the boundary of sigma lying on the sphere uh, cannot be removed. Just to think about the uh, cartinoid yeah, intersects with the ball um, orthogonally, orthogonally or, um, or at uh, a constant contact angle or the lonely surfaces, right? The, they are embedded, but uh, this condition is violated. <laughs> so we prove a yellow type theorem, um, which says that the star-shaped free boundary CMC hypersurfaces in a ball are umbilical. So um, with the star-shapedness, and um, of course the, the topology is um, fixed uh, to be a uh, ball type, um, but uh, um, and also it is embedded. Um, but we do not uh, assume that the um, the hypersurface lying in a half ball or the boundary lying in a hemisphere. Okay, uh, and here the star shapedness is not a uh, usual one. So here the star shapedness means 
that the uh, conformal killing wet field we mentioned before, xe uh, dot nu, is non-negative for uh, some uh, unit <coughs> for some um, e in the sphere, some constant unit vector. Okay, so uh, that means um, so we we recall that the integral curve of xe um, here in the previous picture here, and um, the star shapeness of the, this kind of star shapeness means that the hypersurface in the unit ball uh, intersect each integral curve uh, at most once, and exactly once, right? Okay, this is the star shapeness. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, combining the previous uh, Minkowski type formula uh, we derived, so the first one and the second one, and uh, by using of this uh, condition, star shapeness, and using the uh, Koch-Schwarz inequality, that is uh, h1 square bigger or equal to h2, then you can easily get this, uh, this result, the lead type theory. And we also study the stable CMC hypersurface in a ball. So, uh, a capillary CMC hypersurface is called stable uh, if the second derivative uh, of the energy is non negative for volume preserving admissible variation. So, that means uh, the, the, so we can calculate the uh, second derivative, uh, second uh, variation formula for this energy function to be the uh, as follows. So the here the first the in, in interior part uh, is familiar to to us. That is the minus five times here. This is the Jacobian uh, Jacobian um, operator, and here you have a boundary term. So the boundary term is phi times the the uh, normal derivative of phi minus q phi. So that means, uh, so it is stable, means this um, uh, this uh, integral in, in integration is non negative for any smooth function phi uh, with this constraint. Yeah, this constraint, uh, the volume preserving constraint will give you a uh, uh, restrict on the admissible function phi. The integration of phi is uh, when, uh, is zero. Yeah. Here phi is in fact uh, the normal component of the uh, variational variational field. And here uh, q is just given as follows. So it is one over sine theta plus cotangent theta times the uh, second fundamental form of the hypersurface uh, on acting on this uh, co-normal uh, co -normal direction. And in a, in a special case, theta is pi over 2. That is, free boundary case, you know that um, uh, q will be 1, so simplify to be 1. And then um, a remark is that uh, Stenberg and Tambran they show that this second uh, variational formula still holds for locally area minimizing set. So this locally area minimizing set is um, in in the framework of uh, sets of finite parameter. So it is not necessarily smooth. Uh, so that means uh, this um, this um, Inequality five holds for uh, any phi which is smooth away from singular set of sigma, and um, the the, the integ uh, integration of phi still satisfy that uh, phi of uh, the integration of phi is zero. Okay, so that means um, 
uh, this kind of stability inequality uh, holds for uh, for more general phi. <clears throat> so a question is that whether stable capillary hub CMC hub surface in a ball can be classified. So recall that uh, in closed case, Barbosa to comes uh, to come uh, prove a famous theorem that any stable closed CMC hub surface in the Euclidean space has round sphere. Yeah. And so we can imagine that uh, this kind of stability of um, this uh, constraint variational uh, problem can be classified. And this was um, uh, first uh, initiated by uh, Rose and Vegaster. Uh, so they proved that uh, um, so if the uh, CMC is just the minimal, so if you have free boundary minimal case, then the answer is yes. Yeah, that is, um, you can classify it to be uh, all geodesic, totally geodesic uh, force. And uh, recently, learners um, find a, a new instability, uh, a stability inequality, and uh, combined with the previous um, previous uh, argument of Rose Vegaster, and they prove that for free boundary CMC uh, surface that is in two dimension case, then the answer is yes. And uh, lastly, finally, <coughs> we um, we finish this um, this uh, question. That is, um, we prove that for any dimension, so any and uh, any stable immersed capillary CMC hub surface uh, must be umbilical. Okay. <coughs> so. Um, uh, the following, uh, then we uh, give several remarks. So uh, this result is not only true for smooth one, uh, but it's also true for stable stationary hypersurfaces with a singular set uh, with um, Hausdorff dimension at least n minus two. Okay, uh, for the singular set, and in fact uh, this one is. Um, because our proof is a, a, an integration argument, and we have already know that Stenberg Tambran shows that this uh, stability inequality is hold, uh, holds uh, for some sing, um, some um, function which is all admits a singular part. Okay, and. Uh, the second remark is that it is also true for other space forms, namely uh, any stable immersed capillary CMC hypersurface in a ball in a space form is umbilical. Now, this is because we you will see that we use the Minkowski formula, uh, the argument by the Minkowski Shun uh, type formula. So we have already seen that in space form, we still have uh, such kind of uh, Minkowski Jones uh, type formula. Okay, and the third remark is that it is also true for exterior problem. Uh, that is, your hypersurface lying outside the ball. Uh, or more, ge more generally, only need to assume the boundary of the hypersurface lying on the boundary of ball. So the, the, the hypersurface can can be um, can uh, can lie inside or outside. That means it can uh, intersect with the the sphere. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's view a little bit uh, which uh, what argument Rose Vegas and Nunners used. So. Uh, to use the stability condition, one needs to find good test function with the interior integration vanishes. Yeah. So for surface with boundary, 
this is not obvious to find. And Rose Vegasta and Nanners, they used a hash type balancing argument. So they use um, in two dimensions, you can use um, the tools in complex analysis and they can find a, 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 a holomorphic uh, mapping phi psi from M to the hemisphere uh, with degree psi uh, bounded by the genus plus the boundary component. Then by a conformal diffeomorphism of the hemisphere, you can you can make uh, the first two component of psi uh, has a um, the the vanishing integration, and the third component of psi uh, restricting on the boundary of half surface is zero. Okay, so and um, Nanners uh, improved uh, this argument and uh, in a new stability inequality. Okay, so. Um, um, that means, uh, except uh, besides the stability inequality uh, we have before, uh, he used um, use uh, this uh, stability condition to prove a new stability inequality. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, with some um, with some Dirichlet um, boundary condition, so that this psi, the, the the third component of psi can be used. Okay, but zero arguments can only work for two dimensions. So our approach uh, to this problem is based on this Minkowski shown type formula. So we have already seen this formula. Yeah. So you have a interior integration, a vanishing. That is the the integrand is x plus cosine theta nu, uh, in the product with e minus the mean curvature h1 times the inner product of x e and nu. So you use this phi e for any uh, unit constant uh, vector e as the test uh, as the admissible function in the stability condition. And so <laughs> When you insert this um, test function in this stability inequality, and by computation, yeah, and for any e, for any um, coordinate uh, unit vector, e1 to e n minus n plus 1, you compute this uh, Jacobian of phi and the boundary term. Then you will get, you will see that. Uh, in fact, this phi e satisfy that the normal derivative minus q phi uh, vanishes, and the Jacobian uh, Jacobian operator on phi can be uh, computed, and you uh, by adding all these um, coordinate unit vector, you will uh, come to this uh, inequality. Okay, here we add a minus sign here so that this stability um, positive positivity becomes the negativity here okay <laughs> now we see for this integration so here this term is um, always non-negative by Cauchy-Schwarz inequality so we want to see whether this one is non-negative non-negativity uh, non-negative yeah when you see when theta is um, pi over 2 and h is 0, that is minimal case and uh, free boundary case, then you see this term reduced to uh, x squared. So it is, um, it is uh, naturally, uh, this is obviously non-negative. Yeah. But in general case, uh, you do not know whether this one is non-negative. So then we introduce uh, the following function phi, capital phi, to be this one, and you compute the Laplacian of phi. You see it gives you uh, an additional term. And because um, 
find when you restrict on the boundary, x square is one, and uh, x dot nu is given plus cosine theta, uh, also uh, equals to zero. So when you restrict in phi on the boundary, you see that it is uh, it vanishes. So uh, then you see the following fact that the Laplacian of one over two phi square, when you take integration by using Stokes theorem, you say this is zero. Okay. So you can add the previous uh, inequality by a zero term, that is the integration of Laplacian one half phi square. Okay. But um, when you compute this, you get some additional term inside. Okay. So you will see that um, uh, these two uh, integrand will reduce to the following, uh, that is n times the tangential part of x, then, then norm square, times n h square minus uh, mean curvature square, then plus gradient phi square. Of course, for this one, you can easily see that this is now negative. Okay, then you get a. Uh, then you get uh, uh, all the previous uh, inequality will become equality. So then you see that um, this um, n h square minus mean curvature square is zero, and also gradient phi equals zero, and this is easy. Then you can easily conclude that the Hubble surface is. Umbilical. Okay, this is our uh, proof. Yeah, uh, and we can also use um, this Minkowski type formula to to reprove uh, Alexandrov type theorem. So, um, in addition to uh, for this Alexandrov type theorem, we need in addition a Hatzkasha type inequality. So. For embedded free boundary hypersurface in a ball, so that the hypersurface lie lies in the uh, half ball. So if you have a constant unit normal e, then the half ball is given by uh, this uh, inner product or inner product of x e positive part, right? So <coughs> when the hypersurface lie in this half ball. Then you have uh, the following Hasekasha type inequality that the integration of x e over h1 is bigger or equal to n plus 1, the, the integral over omega of x e. Okay. And before recall that the Hasekasha type inequality is given by 1 over h1. On the boundary in integration, large or equal to the volume. Okay, now you have uh, uh, some kind, uh, some some weight here, x e. Okay, and here in fact we use uh, uh, Chu Xia's uh, weighted relief formula uh, with weight x dot e. Okay, so um, yeah, this is the Hasekasha type inequality. Uh, yeah, and also the equality holds if and only if the hypersurface sigma is a free boundary spherical cap. Okay, <clears throat> so combine this Hasekasha type inequality with the Minkowski Jones type formula. Yeah, we can reprove the Alexandrov type theorem for embedded free boundary CMC hypersurface in a half ball. Okay. Yeah, this is the second part of my talk.